<clears throat> well, good morning and welcome to Morning Mail. Today is Wednesday, April the 27th, 2022. Good day. Good to be with you this morning. Don't know what the day holds for us weather-wise. They're talking about a chance of rain, and it's cloudy and a little cool this morning, and I hope they're right. We certainly could use it. I hope that your weather is good wherever you are that you're watching this morning, and thank you for taking time, either live this morning or sometime today, to be with us during this few minutes of morning mail. Let's begin our time this morning with a word of prayer, and then we'll get back into our introduction to Paul's first letter to Timothy. Let's bow together. Loving Father, thank you for the day and its blessings, for you being with us, watching over us. Thank you for the opportunities that come our way each day, and we pray, Father, that we'll take advantage of those with your grace and strength and our faith, our desire to serve and do your will. Father, we still are mindful of Ukraine, the circumstances there in that part of the world, our brothers and sisters who are having to leave their homes and their home country and become refugees in other countries and cities. And I just pray, Father, for them and the work that they're doing in reaching out and sharing the good news of your kingdom. Father, continue to be with them. Be with our nation here in America as well. The circumstances here are not just real good either. And we pray, Father, that we can do whatever we can in our place to turn people back to you. Bless us this morning in our time together. We ask this all in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in this morning's morning mail, we are continuing an introduction to Paul's first letter to Timothy. We began this yesterday by briefly considering those named in the opening words of this letter, and at that time we considered Paul. Today we're going to consider Timothy, and then tomorrow we'll consider the congregation at Ephesus and the situation there which Timothy faced. Still following the standard form for correspondence in that day, the letter next gives the name of the recipient. The beginning of verse 2 of chapter 1 of 1 Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy, My true child in the faith. This young preacher had been named Timothy. Now that combines two Greek words, one which means honor and the other which means God. And so his name is a designation meaning one who honors God. Timothy was no doubt named by his mother, a devout Jewish who had taught him the scripture from childhood. See Acts 16 verses 1 and 2, excuse me, Acts 16 verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5, and chapter 3 verse 15. Now again, according to that passage in Acts 16.1, his father was a Greek. When we first meet Timothy in the Bible, he and his family are residents of Lystra, Acts 16.1. William Barclay, in his commentary on the letters to Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, on page 21, described Lystra as, quote, a little place at the ends of the civilized earth, end quote. Paul had visited Lystra on his first missionary journey, Acts 14, verses 6 to 20. As a result of Paul's preaching the gospel there, people had become Christians and the congregation there had been established, Acts 14, 7 and verses 20 to 23. It was probably during this first visit of Paul to Lystra that Timothy's mother had become a believer. Most think the phrase, my true child in the faith, here in 1 Timothy, indicates that Paul was also responsible 
for Timothy's conversion. One can imagine the lad Timothy wide-eyed as Paul healed a lame man at Lystra, Acts 14, verses 8 to 18. And then imagine Timothy teary-eyed as Paul was stoned and left for dead. Acts 14, verses 19 and 20. Paul did not die and went on and later would revisit Lystra on his second journey, Acts 16, 1. In between those first two visits, Timothy grew remarkably as a Christian and a servant of God. He attained an excellent reputation among Christians throughout the area. Paul was impressed and invited him to be on his missionary team. Acts 16, verses 2, in the beginning of 3. The apostle was probably influenced by the Spirit in making this selection. See 1 Timothy 4, verse 14, and Acts 13, verse 2. Seeing one of their members become a part of Paul's team was of singular significance to the congregation at Lystra. In a solemn ceremony, the elders laid hands on Timothy, 1 Timothy 4.14, as also did Paul, 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Before Paul, along with all his other co-workers, continued on their missionary journey, Paul had Timothy circumcised so that his mixed ancestry would not be a liability in working with Jews. Acts 16, verse 3b. From this point forward, Timothy was generally by Paul's side, unless his mentor sent him on a special mission. He shared in Paul's evangelism of the Greek province, provinces of Macedonia and Achaia. Acts 17 verses 14 and 15, and chapter 18, verse 5. On the third missionary journey, he was with Paul during his long ministry at Ephesus before he was sent on uh, to Macedonia, Acts 19, 22. Later, he traveled with Paul from Corinth back to Macedonia and then to Asia Minor present-day Turkey, Acts 20, verses 1 to 6. When Paul was imprisoned in Rome, <coughs> excuse me, when Paul was imprisoned in Rome, Timothy was with him. In Paul's prison letter to the Christians at Philippi, he gave his young co-worker the highest possible recommendation. In Philippians 2, verses 19 to 22, Paul wrote regarding Timothy, quote, But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare, for they all seek after their own interest, not those of Christ Jesus. But you know of his proven worth, that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel, like a child serving his father. End of quote. Now, after Paul was released from prison in Rome, Timothy again traveled with the apostle. During those travels, Paul left the young preacher at Ephesus with specific task to perform. Verse 3 here of 1 Timothy 1. It has been said that the letters to Timothy and Titus should be required reading for beginning preachers. And that's true. One of the first courses I had when I began my studies at Sunset School of Preaching in Lubbock in February of 1971 was under Tex Williams and it was over those these three letters of Paul to Timothy and Titus. Now we need to understand however 
that Timothy was more than just a preacher in training. He was Paul's representative, an apostolic representative. What Timothy did was by Paul's authority. Whatever he did was the same as if the apostle himself were doing it. And people needed to understand that. See 1 Corinthians 4, verse 17. Now, Paul, as we've said, characterized Timothy as his, quote, true child in the faith, end quote, the beginning of verse 2. True is translated from a Greek word which means legitimate or genuine. Now, Paul could have been referring to the genuineness of Timothy's conversion. More likely, however, he had in mind the legitimacy of Timothy as his chosen representative. And so Paul, as we saw yesterday, established his own authority, and now he establishes that of Timothy. Timothy faced an overwhelming task at Ephesus. He was young, apparently naturally reserved and sensitive, and perhaps even plagued by poor health. See 1 Timothy 4.12, 5.23, and 2 Timothy 2.22. He was to face false teachers in Ephesus who were aggressive, argumentative, and influential. He needed Paul's backing and Paul's encouragement. Timothy's need for encouragement may explain the next part of the opening words of 1 Timothy. In correspondence of that day, the greeting came next. As a rule, Paul's greetings expressed the desire that his readers enjoy two things, grace and peace. See Romans 1 verse 7, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 3, and 2 Corinthians 1 verse 2. Now grace was a common Greek greeting, while peace was the Greek equivalent of the common Hebrew greeting, shalom. Like shalom, the Greek word translated peace was used to express a desire for the well-being of another. In Paul's letters to Timothy, he adds the word mercy in his greeting. Look at 1 Timothy 1, verse 2b. Quote, Grace and mercy and peace from God the Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. See also 2 Timothy 1, verse 2b. Distinguishing between grace and mercy can be difficult. Grace is sometimes defined as unmerited favor. Mercy is an act of compassion, often for someone unable to help himself. Now, the two words overlap in meaning and can be used interchangeably. Some say that grace has more to do with the disposition, while mercy focuses on the resulting act. Others suggest that regarding God's love for us, grace is God's giving us that which we do not deserve, forgiveness and heaven. And mercy is His not giving us what we do deserve, punishment, including eternal punishment. Now, Paul likely did not intend that we look for diverse definitions for the two words in 1 Timothy 1, 2. He was probably just intensifying the concept of the wondrous grace-slash-mercy of God in Jesus. 
grace slash mercy that Timothy would desperately need as he faced the challenge at Ephesus. This was a special greeting for a special person who faced a special mission. Now on tomorrow's morning mail, we're going to conclude this introduction to 1 Timothy by considering that special mission, the task before Timothy in the city of Ephesus. I hope you can be with me at that time. If you would now, let's bow together as we close this morning session in prayer. Gracious Father, thank you so much again for the day you've blessed us with, for your presence in our lives. And Father, I just pray that we use this day in your service, in your kingdom, that we use this day wisely, that we seek to follow a path of righteousness and do as you would have us to do in accordance to your will. Father, bless us today as we go about our activities. Help us to overcome the weaknesses in our lives and, and to be strong in the things that we need to, to stand forth in for you and for your word. Thank you for the Christ, for the Bible. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, go out and make your Wednesday great. I hope that you are have a blessed day. And Lord willing, we'll be back here tomorrow for another session of Morning Mail.